Bungalow Bill here. Some of you may recognize this game, well XX most of you will recognize this game, and it is not from the depths. I'm trying something new, a Rage series, where I try a game that makes me unreasonably angry, and I see how long I can make it before I swear. The timer in the bottom right will show you how much content I skip as I do some cuts, and the point at which I ultimately fail. I have 87, 87 minutes on record for this game, so do not expect speedrun quality out of me. Now let me explain what I don't like about this game. The first, thought, the first thing is that, so if you saw how the hammer jumped there, there's something very there's funky in the control sometimes. It's really hard to peg what it is, but there's some very non-linear responsiveness of the hammer that seems to cause there to be some odd snaps, like you saw it again. I suspect it has to do with non-linear behavior and whenever I drop frames, it causes that to really act up. It can make this game quite, quite challenging. But let's get going. Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. So, yep, obviously not the best player. Oh, I missed that. I was trying to jump all the way across. Thanks for coming with me on this trip. So, what else do I not like about this game? Well, there is the narrator, who is a smug person who was con conceived outside of wedlock. You can see that this is already challenging for me. Oh, I'm trying to move faster than before, and it is definitely costing me. So, this narrator also sort of pretends to understand uh, rock climbing and mountaineering, and, or sort of like the spirit of climbing, and talks about it during the game a little bit, but, you know, um, bottom-up climbing's dead. It's not like people fall during a climb when they're practicing and stop anymore. They keep going, they practice the crux until they have it figured out and dialed, and then they do it from the bottom up in a single take. You cannot do that in this game. That act of climbing, in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly, in danger of falling and losing everything. So... Anyway, when you start sexy... Definitely... Home, you're standing next to this dead... Definitely some stuff to work out here, because I haven't played through the beginning in a while. I haven't made it through the staircase section, if you are familiar with that. You prod and you poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach... So, I do think that the narrator is at least self-aware to some extent, which is nice, because, you know, he acknowledges that we're climbing up a pile of garbage. And but to some extent, this game is a pile of garbage. So here's the other failure of the controls that I don't like. If you saw how I fell down like that, I was not actually doing anything with my mouse to lower myself. There is feedback on the hammer. It's very hard to do that. I think there's a better way to do this, but I haven't figured it out. Like you can do, do something like this. But the thing is, this is, essential to the act of this is an intentionally, despite the fact that he says this wasn't made to be intentionally frustrating, uh, this particular problem, and I mean problem like in the rock climbing sense of a, of a difficult sequence of moves, this, this particular problem feels like it was very much intended to be made frustrating. Because this rock is very slippery, different obstacles in this have different frictional coefficients to them, so right, it's really hard to do that. And pogos and windmills and that sort of stuff, for the height that you get, they're kind of janky. And it's really hard to move the hammer close to yourself. You can see how it kind of sticks like this and bounces off. It can really mess with you. The, the controls in this game fight you, and that's one of the reasons that I really, truly love this game. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. So... If I push the hammer too fast, I won't go anywhere. If I push it too slow, I won't go anywhere. What? 
I am a little bit stuck because my cauldron is incredibly sticky. So you see there, my hammer just just absolutely skipped off. I, as far as I can tell, like I correctly hit that area, but there was just no friction to the rock there. And this game feels like it's often very, very punishing for absolutely no reason. So it wouldn't be terribly difficult to do a lot of these, like if you're the design, if you're the designer. And that was another bug. I moved my mouse very slowly there. And it just seems like I might I might have dropped frames or something, and it really messed something up. But frictional coefficients in this can be very unpredictable. The actual backgrounds do not always correspond well to the objects that they that are behind them, or the actual like physical physical objects. So sometimes like you just have to learn by trial and error a lot of the time. Visually you can't always tell what you're doing. This sort of thing can be difficult as well because of the environmental feedback. So you can see at the top of that beam I didn't skate off of it but at the bottom I did. And I didn't really do anything terribly different in either case. What makes this chimney particularly challenging for me is how hard it is to work with the sledgehammer in a tight space near you. It's, it's really hard to reel it in in a decent manner. Right like that. So I was trying to keep it close to me. It is very hard to do it. The controls feel incredibly, incredibly indirect, and it makes this sort of stuff super, super painful sometimes. And also, your sledgehammer doesn't really fit through here, so it's a little uncomfortable. But you really have to make it past that little jaggy thing. Like that. So this is an easy thing to make it up if you kind of sit your butt on each level. I'm trying not to do that. Oh man. The objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. I mean, like I could have done that if I pulled the hammer in better. It is actually really hard to do that sometimes. made to be consumed and used in a certain context. I was pulling the mouse in, but it was not pulling the hammer in. I have messed around with the mouse sensitivity a lot, but I think this game just has a certain amount of jankiness to it that is so hard to get used to. I imagine if you practice a lot and you have a machine that puts out a very, very consistent frame rate, it'll get easy to work with. But when you see people play this, it doesn't look that hard. But you don't get to see how absolutely janky the control scheme is. Over time, <sighs> we've poured more and more refuse. So today, I did a fair amount of walking around in Boston, and it is it's very icy out there. We got a lot of snow and freezing rain recently. Trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca. And. You could build culture out of trash, but only trash culture. So it's not something that people are really equipped to clean themselves. The the issue is that so the issue is that like just with snow shuffles and stuff and the things that people just sort of have, you can't really. You can't really clean... Oh, I wanted to get my hammer over that, but I guess I'm not going to be able to. Please let me get my butt over there. I was just having a lot of friction with the concrete barrier. That's not the sort of thing that people can really deal with on their own with just, you know, shovels and that sort of stuff. So the solution that a lot of people have done is simply to not deal with it. So, 
the walkways are just super duper. Gen X's fanfic novels, scan magazines, green super super icy everywhere, and it's a pain. And spending like, with unbranded adverts the nine miles or so of walking that I did usually wouldn't be that difficult for me, but I was doing a lot of penguin waddling, and it was it was hard. I'm tired, and it really offers perverse incentives, right? Because in the city, like cars just don't belong here. And we hit refresh. And they really don't. Persevering, disappearing they're noisy, the pot, they're smelly, they're, stung, they're dangerous, they take up a lot of room. When you drive a car, you're making everyone's life worse. In this really, context, as much as we should, friendly content that's gentle, that lets you we should be focusing on Why make making it easier demand? for pedestrians and cyclists to move around the city, and the having people manage entirely on their own the whole like passability of the public sidewalks is not functional and you know the city they find people if they don't do a good job but that's not that's not a good way to deal with things especially because i could understand them them finding people if they actually went and used those fines as money to pay people to clean the sidewalks and did something good with them I find it kind of inconscionable that they just use it for revenue generation. It's estimated that the city of Boston earned about $85,000 off of the last snowstorm. And that's even before this ice of the sidewalk. I'm sure they're raking even more now. It's, it's actually pretty disgusting. Oh dear. Well, that's unfortunate. That's probably partially my fault, but it really felt like I barely moved the mouse and the hammer just moved all the way around. Sometimes I move the mouse a lot and get no hammer movement. And um, other times I barely move the mouse and I get... No. Yeah, it was definitely my fault though. And sometimes... Sometimes I barely move the mouse and I get a lot. Sometimes I move the mouse a lot, I get a little. But even though I own a car, which makes me part of the issue as far as... That's pathetic. You see part of the issue as far as needing to find a place for, you know, to park the car and taking up space that way. I really try to walk and bike whenever I can. However, I don't bike on public roads anymore. I've been hit by cars too many times. I haven't broken anything, but I have been hit by cars. And that's just something that that's just something that happens if you if you bike in the city. People think of bikes as being really maneuverable and stuff. They're not. You can't pull as many Gs as a car can. Your center of gravity is way higher than most cars. You have more pressure on the tires, which means you get a lower coefficient of friction. Your tires have a tendency to be fairly smooth to give you decent friction when it's dry, but it means you get incredibly poor friction when it's wet. When a car has your number, they are going to hit you, and you are not going to be able to do anything about it. I've known too many people who have gotten seriously injured in car strikes as well, and I've really just gotten just gotten too beat up over the years. So I bike on limited access bike paths sometimes, which have their own issues because you know you have dog walkers and stuff and they don't control their dogs, so they run in front of you. You say on your left as you're approaching a pedestrian from behind, and they just wander all the way to their left. It's it's a nightmare. Our bike infrastructure in Boston is, in the surrounding areas, is absolutely pathetic. It's really inconscionable. And anytime they try to improve it, they say, oh, it's going to inconvenience people too much, so we can't do that. And like, who is it going to inconvenience? Like, the people who drive cars? That's what we're trying to... Those are the people who are trying to inconvenience. It's, it's a mess. It's a disaster. And we really need to function fundamentally change something with our massive population. Uh, come on. When games win, I've never made it past that before. With our massive population, you, resetting and delaying you, we, need to, like, we need to live in cities and we need to do it efficiently. They and burn through it quickly, cars aren't really part of that. Some tricks for the clicks of the feckless. But that's not that was pretty sad, that. wasn't it? You could swallow a baseball bat. <clears throat> Oh. 
Well, yeah. This is some poor coordination. I, I imagine there is supposed to be like a solution to get past this part, but I am, I'm not getting it. I'm clearly not getting it. No, so doing a windmill like this is not going to get me anywhere. I'm moving the mass up a lot and it's not lowering me. There we go. I'm not sure if I move my mouse too fast or too slow there. A little bit of a pain. So there, I think if you saw it, I think I moved the hammer too fast. It's either that or, or I bounced off the wall a little bit. It's, it can be really hard to tell sometimes. I'm not sure he's done it yet, but, you know... Ooh. This, this narrator also quotes Nietzsche and that kind of stuff, and, like, pretends that we're going on some kind of mystical journey, but... You know, we're climbing a pile of garbage. This game is a pile of garbage. Ooh, that was weird. I don't know exactly what happened. Um, uh, it's not listening to me. There we go. Hmm. I thought that was going to be enough to get my hammer over there. I might have tried to drag it too much through the cauldron and not enough around it. That might have been what got me. That was frustrating. I also don't want to drop back through here. So far it's been kind to me, but this is the first time I've made it up the staircase. Like, I've seen speedruns of this. It's been a while since I've seen one, but I have seen them. Now I know, most likely you're watching this on YouTube. Oh, that was close. Twitch, while some dude with 10 million views does it for you. Like a baby uh, yeah, bird that's bed clearly bed. not me. Anyway, that's I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will let it pass over and through me. And in the wake of my fear, I will turn my inward eye upon myself and see that the fear is gone, only I remain. I imagine that's not actually the quote, but... Um, I am very poor at actually remembering quotes. Yes, my excellent hand-eye coordination. So I failed to, let me see if I can save myself. There we go. I failed to pull in that time I managed it. Okay, I can take things a bit slower here, I think. Slow things down a little bit, wipe the sweat off of my palms. Perhaps recite the litany against fear again. And then take a giant plunge off of this toilet. Oh, did not get my hammer up there. Oh, and that's that's not a euphemism. That's I'm I, like I'm actually talking about this guy's sledgehammer. But on the off chance that you're playing this, what I'm saying I'm is probably going to take a real nice system. fall all the way Maybe to the beginning soon, to be and then What's then the there will be tremendous frustrated. tremendous if swearing. If you got this far, feeling frustrated is underrated. I assumed that this was going to be a very sticky table. It seems that I may have been wrong about that. Sweet, juicy fruit locked inside a bitter peel. That's not how I feel about a challenge. I only want the bitterness. It's coffee. It's grapefruit. It's licorice. Licorice isn't all just bitter. It's a candy. Definitely need the litany against fear again. Oh, no. This thing that we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. Mary Pickford. What? 
Yeah, see, this wouldn't be so bad if I could just keep trying the same the same parts. Especially because the part that I just fell off of probably wasn't that hard. But I find the mechanics in this game highly unreliable. I'm surprised that people bother to speedrun this piece of trash. Like, did you see that? I went nowhere. Like, I dragged the cursor all the way under me. I literally went nowhere. There wasn't even anything for my cauldron to be stuck on. So something that I don't really understand about this game is why you'd really want to like, spend time grinding to get good at it. You know, for something like playing Super Smash Bros. Melee, I have ground a lot of time. I'm still not amazing at it. But I, I have some technical skill. You know, I can do I can do wave dashes, L and R canceling, shuffles, that sort of stuff. Definitely not a professional, like a tournament level player, but I'm okay. But like, I can sort of justify grinding like that. I have no idea why I slid down that so easily. I thought this was actually kind of grippy. I can kind of justify grinding that because like th there is something that you can do with your skills. So there, like my cursor went all the way to the bottom and then drifted back. I went nowhere and I'm still not going anywhere. Like what, what is getting stuck? Like my cauldron is touching the wood, sure, but why am I stuck? There is no physical object there that I could tell that I was stuck on. It's, it's baffling. It's really what makes this game so frustrating is that it seems to be massively inconsistent. Like in games where you die and you deserve it and you know that you deserve it, it's not so frustrating to die. This game, horribly frustrating because just weird stuff happens. You get sent back really far. You can't always even tell if you did something wrong or what you did wrong or what the right way to get through an area is. Because the physics are just absolute jank. Like, it, there's definitely a skill element to it that if you play long enough, you will get good at this game. But it, again, why? There's no like PvP or that sort of thing like with Super Smash Brothers. It's not like the piano where, or a musical instrument where, you know, I would have an actual reason to get good at it. But with no haptic feedback device or that sort of thing, having the character or having the environment provide feedback onto your character is just kind of it's an idea that's been tried many times in gaming and it seems like it could be fun and it could work it is garbage like that that's not what i did right it provided the hammer provided some sort of weird feedback or something that made just everything just not work at all it was very hard for me to um sort of phrase my thoughts there without expletives. So we may be, we, we may be seeing the end of this video soon. Alrighty. Let's skip the litany against fear this time. So I've never been here. Oh, I don't think I can do this. Like, this might actually just be outside my skill level. At the very least, I'm not sure I have the, the just like emotional fortitude. Oh. To deal with that. Like, the happiness I, had before. That's the deal. I don't really understand without building up a high level of skill at this game, what I could really do there other than just get kind of lucky. Like, it's it's a low percentage, and the penalty is quite high if you fail. Like, I don't have the best mass precision, but it's not bad. And in this game, I have extreme trouble controlling where the head of the sledgehammer is. The, the controls of a video game sh shouldn't fight you the way they do in this game. It's it's just a really bad game design. The difficulty shouldn't come from the controls. It's not so much that it scares me that you can fall in this next section, 
it's um, how hard it actually is to fall and go down that hole, which means that if I do fall, it'll be that much more embarrassing. If, if I go down that hole, the run is ending. It's, it's absolutely over. Oh dear, how do you make it up that? Like, what did I expect from you? That is so vertical. I actually had decent control there, but I really couldn't see what was coming up. And I just, I just barely messed up. Yeah, there's definitely like some weird mouse acceleration on the actual force that you apply. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's frame-based. It's both, like, it's, it's not what you do with things that you actually want precision control of, like remote control airplanes. However it was done, it was done intentionally to be as frustrating as possible, I feel like. That or, you know, he just heard about exponential control but had no idea what it was. Because with exponential control, usually it's set up so that it's exponential in that as you apply more and more input, you need ex exponentially more input to get the same amount of output. Right, so not that you get exponentially more output. It's kind of like, an, it's a negative expo. This has, feels like it has positive expo, sometimes. Other times it doesn't. No, no snagging, this hammer is kind of a piece of garbage. Uh, I would not suggest it as a mountaineering implement. Right, like if you're gonna go ice climbing or something, just uh, do something else and like, if, if you are going to have to use a hammer like this to swing yourself around in what's probably a 500 pound piece of cast iron full of water, uh, choke up on it a little bit. Right, this actually sort of feels like the sort of climb they put into my gym. Because my climbing gym, the climbs can be really frustrating there. Sort of, the whole draw of the gym t for me originally was that the climbs were very outdoorsy feeling. Right, they put you in awkward positions. They, it felt like they made you become a better outdoor climber. But I feel like at, at some point, at some point they went from being outdoorsy to just, I'm sort of stuck, to just being chassis. And none of them flow. There's like no pleasure or enjoyment to climbing a lot of them. Like sometimes it's nice to have a climb that just makes you like feel kind of, kind of strong. You're going to put into positions where you're not in a vulnerable position. You can apply actual force. The feet are where you need them to be. The movements flow through each other nice. It, the climbs shouldn't all be like that. Like there should be a variety, but we don't get any of those anymore. It doesn't help that it's the gym's inf infamous for sandbagging. The the climbs are supposed to be more along the outdoorsy grade, and they are graded in the most brutal fashion. Like, a lot of them would be sandbagged outside in the in grimy New England areas. So, so, and some of them are way too soft. They do have some grading issues. At some point, though, I I, I showed up one day when they were setting some climbs and. Oh, you can use that, and it just doesn't work very well. And they just threw a bunch of holes on the wall, touched them a few times, and left. Like, there was no forerunning, there was no testing, there was no adjusting or anything. And I think they just got lazy at a certain point. Right, and what, the, what they did, the, what they do there to me feels like, feels like these. Except these are supposed to be frustrating. Regardless of what the narrator says, these are... Right, so it seems easy, like, you know, just swing your hammer and grab onto it. But if you're a little bit too close and you just swing your hammer, you'll just push yourself off. And these are small, slippery ledges, too. So it's hard to get a lot of height off of them. What? 
I'm not sure if you saw that, but when I tried to push off, my hammer got stuck on the top end of that and just immediately ripped me back down. That time it was the cauldron getting stuck. I was trying to keep myself close, but... Oh, uh, cauldron again. Nope, that time it was the hammer. Life is a mosaic of pleasure and pain. Right. Grief. This would probably be a much more fun game for the original stupid sexy hiking, where it's just sort of probably explorational rather than goal-based, which um, just because, you know, 7.4% of players have beat this and I haven't adds a large amount of frustration to it. Especially because of how jank this game is. Like, look at this. Alright, this game can absolutely go fuck itself. <laughs> 